Hello folks, welcome back to Sound Design for Relaxation, Meditation, and Sleep. I am your host, Dr. Lawrence W. Moore, and in this episode we're going to take a look at making cricket sounds, because I'd like to add those to my sound experiments for RMS, Relaxation, Meditation, and Sleep. Uh, there's a reason for the abbreviation. <laughs> it gets redundant saying that over and over, and the YouTube titles don't allow for the full words sometimes. Got to get more important details about the episode in there. So anyway, it's RMS. Okay, folks, so uh, without any further ado, let's get to making the cricket sounds. I know I've touched on this before, and I will probably do so again in the future as I continue to evolve these sounds and mix and match them with other sounds because overall I'm starting to accumulate here uh, a synthesized landscape of natural sounds and uh, that's the whole idea here and so I'll be making variations on different sounds to create different aural scenes and so forth for this overall series um, my latest two sound experiments for relaxation meditation and sleep are still under the 100 view count, so those will not have ads in them. Um, if you haven't checked them out yet, please check out uh, number 12 and number 13. Basically, I will probably at this point shift to just making them on Sunday nights, and I'll be skipping this Sunday here, Sunday the 14th, um, because those two have not reached 100 yet, and so... Therefore, I don't need to put out a new one right away. As soon as they do, probably next Sunday, I will have another one out. So that way you can hear them ad free on YouTube. Okay, folks, uh, that's about enough of that. Let's get on with how to make cricket sounds. So here we go. Here we go, here's a quick example. And then we're gonna build this um, uh, module by module, at least the sound. I'll put in the mixer and everything. I have a, a patch ready to go, but uh, I wanna basically explain the concept so you can do some variation on things for your own customizational purposes. Um, and um, yeah, so here we go. And we will try out a few different settings and I'll show a few different options once again for those purposes of customizing and getting different variations on the sound. Right now, that's my cricket sound as of today. It will continue to evolve and sometimes change or transform depending on what uh, it's going to be in and uh, the other sounds and how it fits in with them. So. Let's go over here to a patch I have ready so I don't have to build everything from scratch, but just the modules in actually making the sound. Those of you who've been following the series know exactly what's in front of you here. Um, those of you who are new to it, if you're familiar with VCV Rack, um, great. If, if not, I do have a series on it um, to learn VCV Rack on the channel. Learn synthesis with VCV Rec, and you could use those as needed. Um, or if you have feel you need a stronger background in synthesis, because I teach basically both in the same thing. Uh, if anyone's not familiar with these modules, these are the mind meld modules for an eight channel mixer, an expander that gives you aux sends for each of the channels plus group outs. Um, so your subgroups uh, can basically also be used as a send to and from effects. I have on aux one a stereo reverb setup uh, from Surge XT. 
these are all free modules by the way and uh, a chorus on aux 2 by Surge XT and uh, I have them on the presets of ambient as far as the chorus is concerned actually that's on send one excuse me reverbs on send two and I'm using my almost favorite now preset uh, now that's echo all right so if we go over here um, I a lot of times I mean I don't necessarily always use the parametric EQ or these two squinky labs compressors but basically uh, sometimes it's great to visualize here the spectrum and the sound so I can point out some things um, channels one through eight are going into this squinky labs compressor here which is can support those eight channels uh, and it also supports the fact that the channels could be mono or stereo so there's really like 16 channels of information going in and out um, but it's numbered one through eight and whether it's mono or stereo here it will matter over here so you could have a mono or a stereo going into one and it'll compress it all the same and the numbers will still line up uh, and then this one is for the additional output since this is the eight channel mixer there's no nine through sixteen and uh, here you can basically have insert outs from your group your groups and your oxes so um, they can be compressed as well by this um, compressor here it doesn't total a number of eight because basically we have two groups on this mixer so they will be one and two over here and uh, the oxes there are four so that would be three four five six over here seven and eight wouldn't carry anything um, because um, there's only really six channels um, once again that would be really 12 underneath the hood because uh, it can handle mono or stereo uh, well in this case uh, largely stereo because uh, well I guess you can send a mono aux send and receive well anyway so anyway they're going into the compressors and then they go into the parametric EQ here channels 1 through 8 as well as the auxes and groups right there and you can basically call up whatever channels you want or any aux or any group and do some equalization on it four band equalizer parametric okay and so that's basically lines up with channels one through eight have the uh, compressor and then the eq in that order uh, before it goes through the rest of the channel strip like that happens before it gets to the mute solo, solo and um, fader area uh, i do have the mixer set to default which is post fader and post mute solo buttons so basically the aux send follows the complete channel strip and then it'll go out if you use these sends right here one through four five through eight and then group one or group two here's the two groups subgroup faders okay so anyway um let's start making a cricket sounds I'm going to use the uh, VCV modules in this. Uh, I'm going to use a, a VCO, standard VCO. And uh, I'm going to use a bunch of LFOs. So let's copy one out here. And I'm going to copy it two times. Basically, um, let's also add a VCA to add that. Basically, um, a cricket sound, like if we were just going to try and make one cricket, uh, I'm basically going to be taking, uh, we're going to actually try all the wave shapes, but I'm going to start with saw wave, and then we'll switch it to the others. But basically, what we're going to do is take audio out from our sawtooth wave, and go in here to the VCA. And then we're going to modulate that VCA to kind of get that ripply effect of, um, I don't know, the wings being scratched together or however they make their sound. I think that's how they do it. Their legs, I don't know, hairs on their legs or is that grasshoppers? I don't know. Um, so anyway, 
as we see there, our amplitude's being modulated. And uh, we'll hear that as soon as I turn this down because we don't want it to be too loud. Want it to be too loud, I should say. And then I am going to, I used yellow here for this cable because this is a control signal and red for audio. That's just the way I do things. So this would be a red audio output going into the mixer channel one. And let us turn that up. Okay. That's how it sounds right now. But we need to put it up to a frequency that sounds more like a cricket. And what I did beforehand is I think I've settled on 3,400 hertz. But we could go a little lower. Let's use our ears a little bit here. Let's see how that sounds. And then I'll lock it in afterwards. But we need to speed up our LFO here. Something like that. And the values that I, you know, so far seem to like is... Uh, I think I made it 15. Like that. But since numerologically I like to have the numbers add up to 7, I made it 15.1. <laughs> you can't tell the difference, but anyway, there we go. So that's the ripply sound that they make. And now we need it to, once again, fluctuate in level, taking this fast fluctuation and fluctuating it slower. And uh, we're going to do that with a sine wave once again. Control, so it's yellow. And, uh, well, actually, I'm going to make it green, because whenever I do volume or gate, um, those types of things, because this is really functioning like a gate now, um, I like to use green. So I'm going to put it there over V for volume. There we go. And I like this to be somewhere around every half a second. So I like things to numerologically add up to 7. We'll do 0 0.52. How about that? Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I'm totally off there. I think it's one every one and a half seconds. So 1.51. That's a pretty good rate. Now that we're hearing it like that, let's see about the frequency. Let me try my 34,000, I mean 3,400 again. Yeah, I like it. I like it like that. Now, I always have a never, another LFO here just to modulate this one so it's not always one, two, three, four, like a metronome. You know, um, I like to vary it, especially when we have other ones. And we will be making a few more. This is like one little cricket there. Um, so we're going to vary its frequency here, but we need to tell it about how much to vary it. Uh, here I always make it a fairly small amount, like I'll let it slow down by a factor of negative 1.51. There we go. And so this oscillator, and how often do I want it to do that? Well, I make these really slow, 0.0. .0 about three, four times per second. Okay. Now, let us hear, we can turn it up a little bit, it's safe. Let us hear what a chorus does to it. And so that's on aux one. I'm gonna use the individual channels for this and I'll explain why in a little bit. There we go. Now that one little cricket has become many.
and we could say, all right, let's put this click cricket over on the left side. How about that? All right, that sounds pretty cool. Now, I'm going to take copy of these. Hit control C there. Let's add a blank panel in here just to separate these visually so I don't get lost as to what is an individual cricket family, I guess. <laughs> With the chorus, it sounds like more than one. Okay. And now on this signal, I want to um, vary it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is say 3400. That would be our mean or center point. How about I raise this a little bit above 3400 and we make it 34. Zero nine, for example, still adds up to seven numerologically. All right, so we're going to take our audio cable out of here. All right, at least I didn't hurt your ears. Oh, come on. There we go. Lower that. And now let's put green cable up to here. And now I like to vary the speed a little bit. So this variation that's ever every so often 0 0.043 times <laughs> per second uh, or cycles per second, let's put that at 0 0.034. So we get a little bit of fluctuation. You'll hear the two cricket sources line up a little bit at times, like now and then gradually separate, kind of like how they do in the wild. They'll gradually get out of time with one another and then gradually come back in time. There we go. Now they're both going through the chorus. And we could put this one, because I think I'm going to do a total of four of these. So put this one right about there. And now we're going to do the right side, which we can do one full copy of both of these, because there'll be two channels that are panned toward the right. Oh, that's what I wanted right there. The blank panel. There we go. Whoa. Oh, come on. I wanted you to undo the resizing. There we go. All right. And then paste these in. Now what I'm going to do is be a little smarter this time. It wasn't a painful thing, but I don't like to put sudden sounds at people. Because I do encourage folks to listen to these on headphones. about there and you all the way okay and so now we're uh, yeah and we can also hook these up first this one goes here and this one goes here now these already have some variations in them um, where you know this is 0 0.043 I'm gonna alternate those 0 0.034 and a VCO of I want this to be 3400 and then this one is gonna be 0 0.043 
and uh, you are going to be now let's do the a different differentiation like a, a displacement below um, which is going to be three three nine one that doesn't numerologically line up but I know something that does three three one zero and I'm going to do a 3490 on this one here. So basically, I'll show you what my thinking is. Let's see how it sounds. That is a, a displacement in pitch there that is larger than I expected. So let's hook up the rest of them and see how it fits together. That's a little too much. Yeah. So we are going to go back to 3409. And you are going to be 3391. So they're 9 hertz above and below the outside ones, which are 3400. So let's just point to the pan knobs here. These... Um, outside ones are 3400 Hertz the inside ones are tuned up by 9 Hertz to 3409 and down by 9 Hertz to 3391 so these are kind of chorusing inside in addition to the chorus effect which I need to add to these channels as well And now the variation of the second LFO on each end that basically varies the speed of the uh, amplitude envelope. Uh, basically, the wah, 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 wah. That which varies the speed is 0 0.034 on this one, 0 0.043 on this one, 0 0.043 on this one, and 0 0.034 on this one. Now, since they were initiated and started at different times, I just hit save there. Um, they're all going to be kind of like a little bit off from each other, but when I open the patch from the start, let's see what it sounds like. So all the LFOs basically were initialized at the same time. And so we're going to hear the rhythm as it would be normally now that the patch has been fully made well not fully we got some things to do yet but I just want to hear that rhythm okay it's a pretty good variation not too much basically the outside ones are pretty much in sync with one another and the inside ones no it looks like these two are in sync with one another well they were or still are these two are in variation hold on here these two are the same amount because they're going right along with each other um let me see here 0 0.034 right all right this one should be 0 0.043 and it is not see I don't want the whole left side rhythmically lining up with each other okay that's the whole point so now they may be in sync at some times but they will eventually get out of sync there you see but these two are in sync with each other. Well, not really. When I restart it, they would be if they're both on 0 0.043. And visually, I can see, yeah, that's the way that one is. And this one is at 0 0.034. So the whole idea is if I want any of them to be totally in sync with each other, I want it to be the outside pair and the inside pair each 
in sync with each other but overall you hear a difference between them um the whole reason being is i don't want like one panned side you know like one ear when listening in headphones to hear something completely in sync and then the other side to be completely in sync with itself but out of sync with the left it would that's for binaural beating which (laughs) this isn't at this point we just want something that sounds like fairly natural sounding crickets so let's load it again and now that the LFOs have been initiated at the same time, we can look at their sync here. So now you see the inside and outside ones slowly getting out of sync with each other. But if you're listening to headphones, you don't hear an annoyance between it being one side contrasted with the other side of your head. It's kind of intermixed. Okay, so now that we've done that, I said that we were going to try out some other waveforms. So let's just do it on one at a time here. I don't want to do it with the uh, amplitude fluctuations, neither this, or especially not this, because those are best to be kind of like curvy slopes, like a sine wave. But let's hear audio-wise what it sounds like if the cricket sound itself was a sign. And uh, if we go here to channel 1, we can see the bands. As you see, this is not a perfect sine wave. And it's not just the amplitude modulation. I've looked at the VCO, uh, this VCO from VCV and it does have extra harmonic material to it even on the sine wave which theoretically does not i think that's its way of kind of modeling kind of like an analog physical you know of electrically driven um module their wavetable module however i've looked at and that does not have any extra harmonics it's pure I guess that's because in that case it's modeling a digital (laughs) uh, component like if you had a digital um, Eurorack module it would still be digital and very clean no added noise I actually kind of like that because that's a lot smoother that compared to this as you see my a lot more harmonic material and some undertonage here that would probably be best to clean out let's try the triangle okay no undertonage but a little bit of richness here and actually I do like that that's a happy medium let's try the square I don't know, that's good too. But, of course, these with added harmonics are going to sound a little more strident than that. And I would say the difference would be what other material is in it and, you know, how do you want the listener to feel. Yeah, let's put them all on square. Or you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put the outside ones on sign and just the two inside ones on square. Okay, so you're an outside one. So it's softer towards the edges. And I don't mean volume wise, I mean in harmonic spectrum. And then what I can do is take the inside ones and lower them in level a little bit. And that gives a little more variation across the whole stereo spectrum here. Now you can also play with the different chorus settings, uh, which presets you want. 
I just beforehand seem to like ambient. Of course, you could adjust some parameters. Ooh, oh. It sounds closer in perspective, but I like the uh, kind of like a little added stuff on it. You probably have to be hearing it on headphones to hear that. That sounds a little more dry. You're a bit more expansive. That seems to smooth them out a bit. What is that? Like a pad. I don't know, something sounds a little bit unnatural about that. Soft. That makes it much brighter. And so we've cycled around to like a pad again. There, the ambient. Yep, like I said, there's something about it. All right. Um, now, now that that's happening, the reason why I have these channels individually going to the chorus is so that in the signal flow of things sound is coming through here obviously it's going out here we're not doing anything with it just observing it um but i have the compressors there just in case um what you could do like if you wanted to hear some of these harmonics come through a little bit stronger you could compress the sound a little bit um, I am going to get to the point I just started a minute ago, but I just thought I'd show this. Like if we turn off bypass, we are on channel one here, which will be channel one of channel one through eight, our left side. So let's solo it. There we go. As you see, these are quite, well, they're supposed to be uneven, but if you wanted to bring out some of those harmonics a little bit more, you have to turn off bypass, lower the threshold. And so we can see we're getting compression there and I can hear the reduction in amplitude. Fast enough. And I just turn it all the way. And then we could do some makeup gain on it, boost the output. And now these, are a little bit closer together. Um, we go all the way, at least visually, we'll be able to see it better. There you see, they are getting much closer. Um, so anyway, I don't think this needs it. Whoa, sorry, this output level was jacked. Let's leave it there. What is its default position all the way down? And then put you all the way up so we're not hearing anything and bypass, there we go. So it was just an example of why I have them there because every now and then they are useful. If uh, this was going to be a final patch, like I just wanted this on its own, I would take out the unnecessary modules. Um, and we're not doing any EQing here. If we kept it on sawtooth, I'd probably want to cut out that low frequency material we were seeing there. But anyway, so it's going through the compressors and the EQ back through the channel strip, and then it goes out. Um, 
once it finishes its trip through the channel strip, it goes out aux one because we have the individual channel set here. But now let's put these all on group one, which means their final destination is here before going to the master. Now here includes the chorus that we have on. The reason why I didn't do the chorus as a group is because I want the chorus to be in with the sound and then have the chorus applied effect to then also go to the reverb. Otherwise, if we didn't do it this way and we just use group, uh, a group out for all of them, both effects, aux one and two, um, you would hear the dry signal go to the chorus and then also go to the reverb in parallel. These two um, changes in the sound will be parallel to one another, and then it would either go out the group or the master, depending on how it, if you use the group. But now that I made them a subgroup, they're individually feeling this effect, and then they go into the subgroup out, and then I'm going to send that subgroup to the reverb, which is aux2. If the reverb time is too long, in this case, that would be equivalent to room size, um, or that would be one of the things the room size would affect. Uh, they tend to bleed together too much. Well, let's put it there, and maybe, yeah, we heard a little bit of effect there as I changed the parameter, but it goes away. That I might reinitialize. Oh, actually, do it this way. Go to another preset, come back. Leave that up. Let's reach lower the decay so it decays sooner. There we go. Now I'm hearing one on the left side coming through stronger than the rest for some reason. Let's put you down here. Put you here. Line you up with 24 dB. And then put you a little bit below that. There we go. And then line you up with 24. Negative 24 dB. Now between left and right, they should be even. Yeah, I guess they are. Although, you know, right here in the group, showing the right as a little stronger, but I'm not hearing it that way. I guess it depends and it'll vary when something on this side syncs up, like between the two lefts. When they do reach a point where they kind of sync up, the left side will sound a little heavier. And then at the point where the right sides sync up with each other, they may sound a little bit heavier because they're doubling each other. But there with the reverb, it sounds like you hear a distant set of crickets as you often do um, with some of them, the dry signal sounding like there's some that are closer to you. Right there. Sounds pretty good to me. Now, I would adjust the reverb settings when blending it with other things. I have been working on a, a crackling campfire sound. 
It's just unfortunately I've had it be a little too crackly for comfort. <laughs> this is for relaxation, meditation, and sleep, by the way. Uh, so I'll be working on that, and we'll see what happens. But I think right now these are pretty decent crickets. It certainly has soothed me while making this video. So if you've learned stuff from this or appreciate it in any way, please hit that like button. And also, please leave a comment. Comments do help these videos get, you know, recognized by the algorithm and disseminated. Um, so ask a question or just say hello. <laughs> and um, yeah, also your feedback is welcome. So uh, let me know what you think and uh, it'll help me make better uh, future sound experiments for RMS. So let me take a snapshot of that. Boink. There. Thank you for joining me, and until next time, take care, stay free, do some relaxing, meditate, and then go to sleep. Take care.